Hi, my name is Austin Foley and this is my dartfish presentation for Canise 330. All right. Starting off, the experiment that I conducted um, looks at the relationship between the force required to achieve the angular velocity of the knee in relation to the weight of a tire to achieve a tire flip. As I define a tire flip for this presentation, I am talking about the force that is required to bring a tire directly up to a 90 degree angle. Um, we'll talk more on why I chose this definition, but as of right now, let's just know that a tire flip for me is all the force required to bring a tire up to a 90 degree angle from zero. So the equation that were used for this presentation were um, force, torque, and angular velocity. To start off, um, the objective of this experiment was to determine the relationship between angular velocity of the knee joint and how that relates to the force that is required to flip the tire. Again, reminding you that a tire flip is just bringing the tire up to 90 degrees. So some of the factors that I measured were the initial and final angle of the, angle of the tire, um, the initial and final angle of the knee joint, and the mass of the tire. So the preface, some of the masses of the tire were measured with a scale, um, and then some, a couple of the others were actually found online and were found for that specific make and model. So I used those instead because I expected them to be more accurate, and I tried to keep that from being a limiting factor. Um, as using the equations I described before, um, I calculated force, angular velocity, and torque. And then I also, for angular velocity, I was looking primarily at the knee joint, the angular velocity, but um, I also calculated the angular velocity of the tire just to kind of compare the two. Um, and we'll see that here in the results. Um, so Dartfish was used to analyze and find the initial and final angle of the tire and of the knee. And then um, it was also used to, to find that initial and final time. Um, the initial time being when I saw movement in my body, as you see my body tense up um, and you start to see a small amount of movement, that was my initial time. And then my final time was chosen to be as soon as the tire leaves my hands. And we'll discuss that more once we um, get further into the presentation. So it's a little preface there. Um, my research question was, what is the relationship between the force and angular velocity of the knee when performing a sufficient tire flip relative to its weight? So. And then the hypothesis for this is, is it, it is expected to find that as the weight of the tire increases, the angular velocity of both the tire and the knee joint will decrease. So we'll, and we'll discuss more on why that hypothesis was chosen and why we expect those things to happen. Um, some factors that are associated with, with this system are the second class lever system. Um, so for me, uh, the fulcrum was at the end of the tire and the whole idea is that I'm lifting at one end and then the fulcrum being at the very far opposite end as I'm um, pushing the tire upward. So I'm not picking up the entire tire. Um, so that's something that has to be taken into consideration. And that's why I wanted to put this, this kind of lever system. Um, and then we also want to look at Newton's first law and Newton's second law. Newton's first law talking about the law of inertia. Um, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. And an object at rest wants to stay at rest. And the tire wanting to stay at rest it takes more force to move it so that's the whole idea of calculating the force so we wanted to keep that into consideration and then i put newton's second law in there as well due to momentum so as we look into the results to kind of preface is uh when you lift the tire the um there's a few degrees in there where the tire actually moves itself to 90 degrees and when i say moves itself i'm saying the momentum in the system is conserved and that um, the tire like say I let go of the tire at 80 degrees and then it carries itself to 90, then that's that's why that law was put, put into place. So for the subject, that's me, <laughs> I'm the only subject, uh, good old quarantine. So my height's 5'7", when I have the right shoes on, and my mass is 160, well it was before quarantine, but that's what it was when I did this experiment. I'm 22, the T-Swift age, and my training status, I would like to say it was very active, I don't say was, it's also related to quarantine, so RIP the Chester Center, but anyways. So 
the methods, how I approach this experiment. Um, I, I put in the preparation stage here, so that's in, you'll see in the first still frame, that's me having a straight back, getting a good grip under the tire so it doesn't slip, uh, making sure that my knee's close to a 90 degree angle. Obviously, since angular velocity is final angle minus initial angle over time, you can't, like it doesn't matter that much, but I tried to keep my posture the same so that my lifting or how I lifted the tire was pretty much constant. So that was something I tried to did, not, not extremely important, but again, was, was thought of. Um, and then stage one of the movement was me exploding upwards, creating that angular displacement in my knee and changing the angular displacement of the tire as well. Excuse me. And then movement two, um, was the falling through movement. So like at first, it's just me coming up out of that squat stance. Um, and then at the second half of the movement, 